Hello again, what an inspiring, invigorating day. I guess it's easy to see what happens when women come together. You get innovative ideas, lots and lots of inspiration. And sometimes you also get that good old fashioned nudge that you may have been needing all along. I don't want to talk too long, but I would like to share just a couple of the key takeaways for me today. One that is important for us always to remember is that the struggle is not for you alone. There are others who are going through similar things. So share your thoughts, create a circle of support that can help. Learn to do things afraid. And boy, that's a big one. We need to learn to make sure that anything that scares us, perhaps makes us feel a little bit uncertain, may well be worth it do doing nonetheless. Cause some trouble and a lot of it if you can. Good trouble, the kind of trouble that shakes things, that stirs things, and that moves us all forward. Remember, this is all about reimagining leadership. This is about improving health outcomes for all. And the last key thing for me, certainly, has been ensuring that we try to create pathways. And pathways doesn't just mean the literal ones, of course, but it means creating access. And that access may come in the form of data. It may come in the form of engaging and communicating in ways and languages that people can access easily. It may be through ensuring that we do and we gather at times when people are able to access and join and, and share with us and learn from us and also teach us. And whether it is also perhaps by location, whether we can physically um, make ourselves more accessible, because if we get more people in the room, it might make it ever so much easier for us to certainly do what part of this day has been about, and that is focusing on improving health outcomes for all. But really, how do we do that by encouraging women to be in positions of leadership? As I said, my name is Dumi Makhabo. It's been such a wonderful pleasure and honor to spend this day with you. What's great is that there is another day tomorrow. So more learnings, more inspiration, more innovation and creativity to keep us going. But for now, I'm going to leave you, but I wouldn't of course leave you on your own. No, no, never would I do such. I'm going to leave you with some wonderful nuggets and food for thought. The first lady you're going to hear from, her name is Hema Budaraju. She's the general manager of Health Vertical at Google Search. And the first lady you're going to hear from is Sanda Ojiambo. She's the CEO and executive director of the United Nations Global Compact. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you. Hi, my name is Hema, and I'm a general manager leading health on Google Search. We all care about the health of our loved ones, our personal health, and in the last two years, the world's well-being. I've often reflected on this. What is Google's role to help build a more resilient and healthier world? We've tried to answer that question by understanding a few things. Where can we bring technology to address some of the most complex challenges? How can we reach the most people who need trusted and accurate information? Where can we empower our partners? This is my net takeaway. Timely, reliable, and authoritative information is vital when making important decisions, and this has never been more true than throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas at Google, we saw search and maps become critical ways for people to learn about COVID-19. So we partnered with public health organizations to provide information that help people stay safe, find testing, and get vaccinated. In addition, we provided healthcare organizations, researchers, and nonprofits with tools, data, and resources to support pandemic response and research efforts. Look, it's been a tough 18 months, but I'm also proud of the progress that we made. Since launching late last year, we've provided authoritative COVID vaccine information to people in over 200 countries across dozens of languages, information that is seen by hundreds of millions of people around the world. People can find where to get COVID vaccines on both maps and search in dozens of countries around the world. And as a strong example of local enablement, we worked with the Ministry of Health in India to show real-time vaccine appointment availability at thousands of locations. I could go on. I'm extremely proud of the work that the team has done so far. And as we look ahead to the world rebuilding beyond the pandemic, 
My team is constantly exploring ways to help people make more informed healthcare choices and get care and guidance when they need it. I've also had a chance to reflect on the leadership principles that brought about this impact. And I'd like to leave you with these three. First, build shared purpose and action. Create a compelling why and why now? The products that we build have a profound impact on the world. And this is not just a privilege, but also a responsibility that we need to take to heart. The second part, communication. Communication is as critical as strategy and execution, especially in a dynamic global crisis. Last, make an internal and an intentional commitment to take care of your teams and your own well-being. You need to build and maintain stamina and equilibrium. I've had a career spanning 25 years, and I can say this with deep conviction. The last two years have been the most impactful of my professional and personal life. I'm proud to be a part of the team at Google and making technology that empowers people and help at scale. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to join these conversations around women's health and reimagining leadership. Thank you to Women Lift Health for convening this very important event. The business case for gender equality and women's leadership has long been clear. Women's leadership has been proven to be an essential driver of economic and financial performance. Studies show that companies with high female representation have annual returns that are 2.8 percentage points higher, and investments in gender equality could reap an additional 28 trillion US dollars in global GDP. And yet women continue to face barriers to economic inclusion. The global gender pay gap is stuck at 16% and is even higher in the health industry. And the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly exacerbated these existing inequalities. 70% of healthcare workers who've risked their lives during the pandemic are women. And infection rates among female healthcare workers are up to three times higher than their male counterparts. And on top of the increased physical risks, other disparities have emerged. For example, we know that women shoulder three times more unpaid care work than men do. And as the pandemic continues to disproportionately impact women, businesses must step in. And this is where the Women's Empowerment Principles, or the WEPs as we call them, can help. For over a decade, the WEPs, which are a collaborative effort between the Global Compact and UN Women have been guiding companies on how to advance gender equality. They can help companies adopt a gender-sensitive response, particularly when it comes to supporting women's health, well-being, and safety, as specifically laid out in principle number three. Our free online survey, the WEP's Gender Gap Analysis Tool, can help businesses identify areas that need improvement on gender equality. The tool also shines a light on health-related concerns, such as quality healthcare services, zero tolerance against sexual harassment, and facilities that are conducive to women's needs. Gender equality is an integral aspect of sustainable development. Yet I know from personal experience that we need to step up our efforts on inclusion. You know, earlier in my career, I often walked into a conference room and I was mistaken for the person assisting rather than leading the meeting. The assumption, of course, was that one of the men in the room was in charge. Encounters like this can have a profound impact on women, especially in male-dominated sectors such as health. According to data from the World Health Organization, 69% of global health organizations are headed by men. So pushing for gender equality isn't just part of our responsibility to build back better from the pandemic. It allows us to tap into our full potential and increase our impact on tomorrow's world. Thank you.